It's the Sin Sports Side Podcast, exclusively on 1045theteam.com. And welcome into the Sin Sports Side Podcast preview of the NFC North Division. Am I right, Cody? We're doing NFC North? Are you ready to do this? Absolutely. Okay. The this frozen like tundra of Lambeau Field. Sorry. No, that was perfect. The music. The music, the music is just 100% yeah. for that. I don't even know why we're doing it for other divisions, but... Anyway, I, um, I have to say the fourth place team, this might be one of the easiest fourth place division, uh, fourth place finishers we have, I think. Maybe not. I don't know. What do you got for me? Fourth place? Yeah, I mean, it seems pretty easy. You're not even thinking Chicago about Bears. this podcast. Chicago Bears. Because I, I don't have to think about it. I know the Chicago Bears are the worst team in the NFC North. They don't even know who their quarterback's going to be. Well, they do. And I believe Mike Glennon will be the starter really? on week one. Really? Really? You, have you watched I the mean, preseason? I think Mitch Trubisky's looked pretty well. He'll be the starter Give him a chance. The season ends. Give him a chance. You're not going to ruin him. I think He's going to get you better by playing. Why? So he can fumble by the running into the offensive shot. lineman? That's the most used up joke I think that's ever been used. And I'm a big Peyton Manning fan. I thought he did a great job with the SBs, but that was an overused joke. And I think that was his worst joke of the night. Anyway, uh, no, that was a while ago. That was back in July. But, but I'm going to say. Let's that was be just, real. Who do the Bears? It's just satirized, man. But who do the Bears have? The Jets were are just joke in general. And... Who do the Bears have? Okay. You oh, lost yeah, Alshon oh, oh, Jeffrey. The actual, okay. Now you got Cameron Meredith. I mean, come on. Meredith's out, right? Right. Okay. So I mean, who are you, you going to throw the ball to? Kevin White. Uh, Kendall Wright. Wow, their names are very similar. Kevin White and Kendall Wright. <laughs> Flows pretty well. KW yeah, no, and man. KW. KW, KW. KW with the touchdown. I know, yeah, no, you're right. Which one? There's not a lot to love here um, on the offensive side. Jordan Howard may get a lot of touches at the running back position. Other than that, though. And then the defense. Brian Urlacher's not coming out of retirement. I hate to break it to hey, you. <laughs> Danny Trevathian, Jarrell Freeman. They're decent linebackers. Prince of Mukamara, Marcus Cooper, decent corners, Quinn Demps. But not good enough to, to win, to single-handedly win football games by any means. Not, so, not good enough to get in the uh, third. I think I say on the Bears, man. I think the Bears are going to have a uh, a growth season. Zach Miller, I think, could be Mitch Trubisky's favorite target. Or Mike Lennon's favorite target. One of the two. I think he'll be the, the favorite target, though, um, on this team. And that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a Mitch Trubisky. See what you got here. Moving on to the third place team. This is where it gets tough. Who do you like? Who do you like the most? Who do you hate the most? I think just Actually, because of the who con- do you like the least? Because I, I like all three teams. You know what you expect when someone gets a big contract? Them to show up and be like, wow, he doesn't deserve that big contract. Not saying that Matthew Stafford's going to have a bad year, but I'm going to go with the Lions coming in third place because I'm really, I mean, I love Jim Caldwell, the head coach of the Detroit Lions, but I just think this could be the, the year we're looking at. I know it's... Everyone's going to pick the Packers at least to make the playoffs. So I got to pick the Detroit Lions now here because I, I think the Vikings are still a really good football team. Enough on the defensive side of the football. The Lions, I don't trust their defense. Uh, I love Ziggy Ansa, of course, but don't lo- trust their defense enough to carry them to, to victories. And if the offense isn't as great as it can be, although their their offense has, I think, been too conservative sometimes in the passing game, if they really you know just air it out, literally, I think that they, their offense could could live up to what I think it can be. But if it's anything that has been the last few years, I think they can stumble off to a bad start like they did two years ago. And remember, they were a team that were fighting their way back until that big Richard Rodgers Hail Mary catch. That, ga- that, that uh, game ended their playoff chances, but they were on their way back to a possible playoff push. I think it could be off to a, like a, one, of the, one of those things from that year. Bad start to the season. Keeps them out of uh, playoffs because it will be too little too late when they when they really do get hot. I'm going to go with Detroit third here, and it's tough because you, you talk about what they did at the end of the season and how they came on strong and just and fell just short. Jim Bob Cooter has found a way to get that offense to produce. Now, I think his running back situation is still a little skeptical, and I think it's a little iffy there. Why well, I believe in Theo Riddick. You, you're still waiting for a guy to step up like Calvin Johnson did for you for so many years. I don't think you've necessarily found that guy yet, but you've got Matthew Stafford, who's been really, really good for you and has gone through the ups and downs with you. You pay him the largest contract for a quarterback. But like you said, 
th this division is too good. You look at the other teams that they're competing with. Obviously, you, you expect them to beat the Bears twice. Then you got the Packers and the Vikings, who the Packers, I think, have the best passing offense out of all those teams that we're talking about right now. Just so many weapons to go to when you got Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. The Minnesota Vikings, they've got a really, really good defense that sometimes doesn't get noticed because of the injuries to the offense that makes the offense look worse than it actually is. But if we're talking Detroit, this team has to produce. There's no way it can't because I think Jim Bob Cooter is looking at becoming a next NFL head coach. I think he is next in line for somebody if he continues to keep the offense going the way that it is in Detroit. So it's really tough, but I just don't think that they have established a true, tough, proven wide receiver and running back core in order to move higher in my list for the AFC or NFC North. All right, cool. Top two now. We got to go top two. A big, this is the big moment of the podcast. Our top two teams for this division and they come down to the R-E-L-A-X Packers and <laughs> the Minnesota Vikings. Who do you got as the number one team in the NFC North? I guess I took him as my fantasy MVP, so I got to stick with him here. You go with the Green Bay Packers to win it. It's really tough because you've got, you've got a really good offense and then a really good defense. And it's, which one do you believe more? Is it the high-powered offense that's going to get you that division win or is it the really tough defense? That's able to get you that strong pass, pass rush, the run defense. I'm going to go with the Packers here. I think if Jordy Nelson stays healthy, this wide receiving core is too good with an arm matched up with Aaron Rodgers. You look at Jordy Nelson is probably the best wide receiver, arguably in the NFC, when he stays healthy. He's a constant go-to threat. Richard Rodgers is a really good tight end. Randall Cobb is a really good role player when all of a sudden... He can take away guys just focusing on Jordy Nelson. And then you add Ty Montgomery into the backfield now, and it seems like, okay, if this pans out, you finally have a consistent running back after having to go through the Eddie Lacy, the James Starks, the whole conundrum that was the Green Bay running game. I mean, this team it can be multidimensional for the first time in a couple of years. If everybody stays healthy, and I think that that's what's given to give them the edge over Minnesota. I did, yeah, I think it's just because of Aaron Rodgers, man. I, I really have nothing else to say about that. Like you said, really good uh, wide receivers continuing to play as long as they stay healthy. Even if one of them does go down, we've seen that they can still make the playoffs and be a potent team. Martellus Bennett, I think there's people who are, are, are too. I think a guy like Matthew Barry doesn't really like him in Minnesota. Or in Minnesota, in Green Bay. I like it, you know, a lot. I think that he could have a really good year there. It's a two tight end system. It's a great way. This right. is what the, New always England, been like this what the New England Patriots have done successfully, and this is why they're so good. When you use a tight end and when you use them off each other the way that New England has, that's why they're successful. You cannot so, be a successful offense so and not be, use a tight end. So there might be some fantasy, you know, uh, concerns that Barry has, but I think overall, just in terms of football, that's what we're talking about there now. It's football, not fantasy football, so I think that he'll be a huge part of that offense for them, and you know, the running back, to me, I th they did fine without, they, they adapted to just having Tom Montgomery as a running back, so I think that's just, that'll be fine for them this year in the defense. Ha-ha, Clint Dix, uh, Clay Matthews, still very good, is good enough, but the, I think the Vikings defense is also very good, and that's why they're my second wild card team, um, which, which I have... Projected. I did not project any in the AFC or in our AFC West podcast, and I have to go back and think if I if I want to change that up. Um, but you can t overall see all of our predictions at 1045theteam.com. Um, uh, I believe God is going to post a lot of our predictions up on there, so that'll be fun for you guys to see as well. But I, I like the Vikings. I think they'll be, still be a good enough team to make the playoffs with Dalvin Cook and the aforementioned from the AFC West podcast, Latavius Murray, now in the backfield. And the, and the wide receivers, I mean, I'm a little concerned about the wide receivers because I'm not sure if there's anyone there other than maybe Stephon Diggs that has this really big play ability. But, you know, Adam Th Th Thielen has been a very a reliable guy over the uh, last season. And um, I, I still believe her in Sam Bradford, but that defense is what I really like, obviously. Linval, Joseph, Everson, Griffin, Anthony Barr, it's a lot to like, Xavier Rhodes, a lot to like there uh, for the Vikings defense. That's why I have them still making the playoffs as a wild card in the ANC North.
I don't disagree with that. And especially, I mean, you can't take too much the preseason really into account a whole lot. But, I mean, this is a team that I watched play a little bit because they played the San Francisco 49ers and the game was on NBC. But you talk about those guys, Xavier Rhodes. Then you like the offense, the wide receiving core that they've got, Stephon Diggs, Adam Thielen, Kyle Rudolph as your tight end. I mean, if Dalvin Cook... proves to be a really good running back, this team has the offense that's capable of winning a lot of games. And that's why I think you're right. I, you look at him as a uh, as a contender, for not only for the NFC, but who knows, maybe this team has the capability to go deep into the playoffs if things align the right way. I mean, injuries, you never know. This is what makes sports so hard to predict is you never know how much a season can change based on just a couple injuries, and the Carolina Panthers saw that a year ago. So, I mean, Green Bay, Minnesota, it's going to be fun. I think for the first time in a couple years, I mean, last year they were fun to watch. No, the last two years, they've been competitive enough. And it's just the Packers have continued to win. Um, but last <clears throat> excuse me, last year you had the Lions make it. Two years ago you had the Vikings actually win the division. So, so I think, again, this will be a competitive division. And the Lions, I think, will be also competitive in the division as well. So, for Cody Marshall, I've been Eric Hammond here on the Sit and Sports Side podcast. Thank you for listening to the NFC North Preview.